Well, I was a member of the underwater demolition team at Levin, and I uh, just returned from Vietnam on my first tour. And because of the rotation, our team was chosen to be a part of the Apollo 10 and 11. And uh, they asked for volunteers, first of all. And there were several of us that volunteered. I was a pretty good swimmer with my fins and legs, and they needed somebody that was efficient to be that sea anchor man. And so out of all those that tried out, I had the fastest times. So they put me on a primary team along with uh, three others. I was what you call the sea anchor man. Uh, I would be followed in the water by two others who had a 200 pound flotation bladder. The three of us would put the collar around the capsule. And then the fourth man uh, would come in later and he put on a biological isolation garment. His job was to decontaminate the capsule and give the astronauts their big suits and uh, also wash them down. And then we'd all come in and we would be part of the uh, lifeguards. Uh, all that photo pool gave us cameras. We had five underwater Nikonis cameras. I had one. My teammate Mike had four. And we took pictures in the close-up view of the astronauts and the recovery. They brought in a boiler plate, of course, you know about those, uh, to San Diego Bay. And uh, we rehearsed with the helicopter crews dozens of times until we could get uh, our job done pretty efficiently. And then we uh, flew to Hawaii on board the USS Hornet. And for two and a half weeks, we rehearsed with the ship's crew so they could get acclimated to our job and help bring that capsule aboard the Hornet without any problems. So by the time uh, the actual recovery, we had it down pretty good. We could probably do it with our eyes closed. The night before, NASA noticed that we were headed in a, a, a big storm, rain shower. So they had changed the location 250 miles. So that threw us off. Uh, the ship had the steam all night long, and it meant that on the recovery site where the capsule would land, uh, the swells would be much bigger than we intended them to be. But standing in the wall, uh, the door that day uh, at 20 years of age, uh, knowing that I was going to jump in the water, be a part of history, be the first one to look in the hatch to see Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Mike Collins. It was quite a high for a young guy. And uh, we always anticipated sharks. And so when I jumped in the water, I was alone. My job was to attach that sea anchor. And the uh, first thing I would do, of course, is look around to make sure that we weren't, you know, surrounded by those critters because that would hinder things. And uh, the, the thrill of just knowing that, and humbling, you know, to know that uh, when I looked in that hatch window, the first human being they saw when he returned was me, and uh, it was exciting. We could see our eyes, we would smile at each other, and there would be a lot of hand signals, but because they had that biological isolation garment, and because we were required to have our open scuba, uh, because of the back contamination procedures NASA put in place. Uh, we weren't able to really speak. We could mumble maybe, but. <laughs> it's somewhat still amazing to think back that all these events happened in my life and that I was a part of it. Uh, when you're, sometimes when you're young and you're doing these things, maybe you don't see the hugeness of the moment, but looking back, it was pretty remarkable, the events that took place and that I was a part of that. And uh, uh, it's, it's still, a big thing, I guess, when I stop to think about it. Absolutely. Anything else you'd like to add about it? Um, the 50th anniversary is uh, going to be a big one. Uh, you know, Neil Armstrong has passed away, and the other two astronauts are way up there in their late 80s. And uh, this is probably a moment to remember when we still have people that were involved. I'm sure that now that we're going to go forward in space, uh, the focus probably will be on Mars and the other events, but uh, this is definitely a time to appreciate uh, what happened 50 years ago.